Good morning, Mr. Mera. Pleasure to be connected with you. Good morning, Omid. Thank you for having me. How have you been feeling with the current corona situation as an individual, as an group CEO? You know, how do I feel? Uh, obviously, like everyone else, uh, I wish it hadn't happened uh, at all. Mm -hmm. However, given that it has, um, I have gained a healthy respect for the powerful message uh, that the world is sharing with us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we like to think uh, we are invincible. Mother Nature has proven all of us otherwise. It's really highlighted our vulnerabilities uh, and the actions we must all take responsibility for, uh, in my view, right? To protect one another and the planet uh, as the population continues to grow at the pace that it, is, uh, it has been growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I also genuinely believe, uh, Omid, that collectively as a human race, uh, we will learn more from this experience than we have ever before in our lifetimes. Uh, in that respect, uh, it could be regarded as a double-edged sword, I would think. Yeah. Um, and that's just a matter perspective right uh, my personal lens is that to try and gain some wisdom and insight from this situation uh, we're all you know forced to deal with uh, is the most positive approach you know I could uh, I could uh, take out of it uh, I was recently asked uh, for reasons to be hopeful during COVID-19 mm -hmm. and how can we see the light at the end of the tunnel right as all of us continue to live uh, in what has turned out into months of quarantining, social distancing guidelines, working remotely and virtually, and dealing with the incredible difficult impacts of the crisis, right? I often find myself motivated yeah. uh, by the everyday things we can do to find hope and inspiration. And just recently, I came across uh, uh, a song and uh, the title was Give It Time. So perfectly, yeah. uh, it outlined the mindset I think we need to have uh, right now uh, is stay positive, uh, support each other, uh, be kind and give it time because uh, COVID-19 doesn't have an expiry date. Absolutely right. It's times like this that uh, unites the nations together, I, I believe. Absolutely. Running to my follow-up question, I would like to know the impacts of uh, the coronavirus on your specific industry and how are you guys coping as an industry? COVID-19 has undoubtedly disrupted businesses uh, across almost every sector. And the short answer is that reactionary tactics are simply not enough. Uh, while everybody had to react very quickly, but uh, in my view, uh, one has to take a step back and think through this uh, mm -hmm. because, as I said, it doesn't have an expiry date on it. Uh, as we enter the third financial quarter that COVID has significantly impacted businesses who are serious about survival, have no choice but to take proactive steps, right? So for those mm -hmm. uh, who, who are looking at this from a survival perspective, um, need to look at it with a different lens. And those who are looking at it from a growth perspective are looking at it from a different lens. But I think, you know, one has to be resilient, flexible, and adaptable uh, enough till full recovery uh, is reached. Uh, the number one priority uh, and most proactive step that all enterprises and industries must address uh, today, in my view, is how to leverage digitization, automation, and AI technologies as the key to operational resilience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not only organizational resilience. Uh, in order to build a stronger, more robust, uh, and more future-proof business post the pandemic. To move the needle on this, uh, most enterprises now rapidly looking to build more automation into their business processes, right? That's what we've been seeing. Yeah. Uh, and are asking for help. 
with identifying the right solutions to accelerate successful enablement. Uh, we've increasingly seen uh, those who were on the fence with automation or embedding AI or who have previously only automated tasks versus end-to-end -end business processes uh, are looking to scale up and meet end customer commitments because that's becoming a challenge given everybody's working remotely and not necessarily has access to every system that they may need, right? Another huge challenge faced is the sheer volume of business data mainly comprised of unstructured data that yeah. needs to be processed that needs to be processed and analyzed right uh, the ability to solve for unstructured data is a huge enabler for operational resilience especially in times like this where uh, the standard processes are not being followed as they were pre covid so this new period that we've entered uh, has further highlighted the failings of traditional technologies uh, that were used and not fit for purpose like OCR. Uh, and the time has now come in my view that enterprises need to start looking at solving, uh, not for the now, but for the medium and longer term, their whole unstructured data challenge, right? Or, or data problem that they've been facing. And as there is zero tolerance in this current climate for failed automation projects uh, or misaligned expectations, mm -hmm. uh, it is now even more Im imperative to get the data piece of the automation puzzle or AI puzzle correct right from the very beginning. Because otherwise that could just take away the foundation uh, of that whole digitization I initiative or or the digital program that an enterprise is embarking on. You know, we at Antworks um, are working with organizations to identify high value automation opportunities uh, and analyze uh, productivity gaps that exist, especially in times like this, right? So companies are asking for help with identifying which processes should they automate, uh, why should they do it. They're witnessing a surge in, in in the interest of technologies such as process discovery, machine yeah. learning based technologies that records you know, all processes and then provides a recommendation mm -hmm. of what you should automate and how you should automate. So those are some of the things that, that, that we're starting to see uh, come up from, uh, from the marketplace and, uh, and our existing customers. So do you think that the current situation has increased, uh, let's say the demand for artificial intelligence? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think there, there, there was keen demand. Uh, there are a, a lot of boxes to check, though, to ensure an AI project is successful on it, right? Uh, is successful or successfully implemented. Right? And I say that uh, because, uh, you know, AI uh, has been used as a very generic, broad, just like it can solve world hunger. It, it really can't, right? Yeah. You know, box number one is really clean data. Uh, for any AI initiative to be successful, the starting point is data. And if you provide the AI engine incorrect, inaccurate, or dirty data, it's going to give you an inaccurate, incorrect uh, outcome. Yeah. Right? I, I cannot emphasize enough, uh, you know, data is the single most important um, ingredient component to the success for any digital transformation journey, right? Mm -hmm. The premise is really simple. The, as I said earlier, the cleaner and quicker the data can flow through an organization, the faster you will achieve your desired business outcome and the happier you will make your end customer, right? But first enterprises need to get their hands around all of their data, right? And that's been the biggest challenge yeah. uh, to be used effectively. That, that means they, they need to identify the right technologies, the right platforms uh, for the digitization of their data. Because if they don't do that, they're embarking on a journey only to hit a roadblock. Mm -hmm. And this is not just, you know, I'm not just only referring to data from a structured or an unstructured perspective. Uh, it's all kinds of data, right? Structured, unstructured, image, inferred you know, all of that, right? Because that's what occurs in the back office of an enterprise. 
in my mind, there's no doubt that uh, accessibility of clean, usable, curated data will either become your digital transformation success or failure point. Because that is really the cornerstone or that, 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 like I said, is the most important ingredient. And recognizing and preparing for that at the start of your digital transformation journey, uh, in, uh, in my view, will save a lot of pain downstream. Uh, when organizations start implementing this uh, at a larger, broader scale, which is what we're seeing taking place. And how good an AI application is depends on, like I said, the data it uses, yeah. right? And how effectively the data is used. So the problem is that more than 80% of an enterprise's data is unstructured or semi-structured. With the technologies being used today, uh, those can really deal with only structured and you know i'll 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 give it probably semi structured to a uh, to a certain point yeah so unstructured data you know includes signatures for example like yeah. if you look at the banking financial services uh, and insurance sectors right signatures everywhere photographs everywhere notary stamps and seals everywhere Th those are all pieces and parts of unstructured data inferences Right? There's a sentence and I need to make an inference from the sentence, whether I'm married, whether I'm single, whether you know, I have a pet, I don't have a pet, whether I have a medical problem, I don't have a medical problem. You know, I could give you a thousand examples like that. You know, unstructured data is, uh, is, is very important to be able to deal with. And the current technologies out there uh, don't stack up. Mm -hmm. Now let's take, for example, all the paperwork that goes into applying for a mortgage or a new car loan, yeah. not to mention an insurance claim, for example, right? It's tedious work for businesses to manually process stacks of documents that impedes organizational efficiency, uh, scalability. It, yeah. it has an impact on you know, customer delight and customer service, uh, and also achieving a competitive edge, right? Yet the paper trail is not going away. And it's not going away and it will remain for accountability, for continuity, for privacy, uh, for compliance and all those various reasons. So to manage the paper deluge, uh, a growing number of companies across industries are adopting the intelligent automation uh, yeah. solutions, platforms that are available in the marketplace today, right? And using a cognitive-based data ingestion platform such as Ours, um, that we call cognitive machine reading, uh, organizations can now be empowered to digitize all of that data, thus overcoming their unstructured data challenge. Absolutely, I can't agree more with you. Um, but now coming towards the last piece of the puzzle, uh, the end users and the customers, how have you seen the reaction or how are they coping with the pandemic uh, whether they've been onboarded with the journey or not being on part of this journey. So whilst, uh, whilst we see clients from multiple sectors uh, <clears throat> um, that have been significantly impacted by COVID-19, um, what's most interesting and possibly less obvious mm -hmm. is how much we witnessed this taking place at both ends of the demand spectrum, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the reality is that the impact of COVID-19 is demand agnostic, yeah. right? Uh, and I say that regardless of whether an industry has suffered a loss of business on conversely seen a spike in demand. Yes. Right? Because there are, there are both spectrums, but the net result is always the same to the business processes and the outcomes being sought. Mm -hmm. Higher efficiency, faster processing becomes a necessity in either scenario, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're seeing a spike or whether you know, uh, you, you, you've been hit by the pandemic uh, pretty hard. So the only difference is that one is driven by survival and the other one by a need to remain competitive and retain customers. Let me share a few examples, a couple of sectors, right? That will give you both the ends of the, uh, of the spectrum. From our own customer experiences, um, 
which are at opposite ends. The insurance industry, let's talk about that first, right? I would say the commercial insurance sector is witnessing a surge uh, in increased demand due to COVID, especially in claims processing. And that trend is only set to continue, uh, especially if you just take the High Court ruling in the UK, which has allowed all commercially insured businesses to claim for loss of businesses uh, and earnings during the lockdown. So flurry of claims. Yeah. Furthermore, this could set a global precedent, in my view, amongst other countries taking a similar path to what the UK has taken, which then will spike uh, claims globally. Yeah. Right? And I think that will continue for six to 12 months at least. This is a great example of an industry which due to increased demand post COVID needs ex and needs acceleration, needs automation uh, in their business processes, in their claims processing to make sure they're able to support their customers. Yeah. Now you look at the travel logistics yeah. airline industry, right? Yeah. Uh, we work with a number of our customers in the travel and logistics space. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, COVID-19 um, has impacted them pretty hard, right? And they, their experience has been very, very different. One of our customers uh, has had 98% uh, of their fleet grounded wow. for, the, for the last six months, right? That's, that's, a, that's a steep hill to climb when you come back. Mm -hmm. However, faster processing again, more efficient processing, is what they're going to have to prepare for when they do come back. Because that's going to you know, make sure that they're resilient and efficient when they do come back. So really, uh, you know, two ends of the spectrum. And as travel restrictions ease uh, and green lanes begin to open in some parts of the world, uh, in my view, especially for the uh, you know, travel and logistics space, yeah. uh, it's imperative for these carriers to get back on their feet as fast as possible and start recouping from you know revenue losses that they've had uh, they have no choice but to remain competitive on pricing exactly. on customer service uh, you know bringing out new products uh, to make sure that they're able to you know pull back customers because that whole industry is going to be battling to gain that market share right so all all of which starts with automation of processes, efficiency, cost saving, which can be passed on to the customer. Absolutely. No, that's definitely correct. Um, now let's talk about Antworks uh, with the current situations, the uncertainty, ambiguity. How are you adapting to those challenges that are being hit by you? We could be sitting here uh, for, the, uh, for, for the whole week, uh, right? And, and talking about uh, the various things that we've done. Yeah. But that said, uh, you know, our focus has been uh, to ensure uh, we work closer mm -hmm. than ever with our customers and partners to align with their changing needs, right? Because needs have been changing. Uh, Antworks has been uh, digging deeper, realigning into our strategic priorities uh, by rolling out point solutions across key verticals. Uh, during the course of 2020 so far, we've completed production of four great new products uh, to bolster to our offerings uh, to the market uh, in urgent need of accelerated digital transformation. Yeah. The arrival of pro process discovery, uh, accounts payable as a service, email agent, and obviously the jewel in our crown, which is uh, our CMR, but we've gotten a new version called CMR+. Plus. Okay. Uh, which is the new newest version of cognitive machine reading are all available to the marketplace uh, you know as we speak right uh, to our customers to our partners uh, we have also made parallel strides in the growth and establishment of our partner ecosystem and are now primed to scale uh, up the reach of our product via the channel uh, much further than before Right. So the channel is really something we're very, very focused on. Uh, the arrival of CMR Plus uh, will empower partners to deliver our products directly to customers by enabling uh, 
easy configuration without the need of support from our delivery teams. So that's how really, you know, we've uh, focused our energies uh, mm -hmm. over, the last, uh, over the last few quarters. Yeah, I understand. And what indicators will you be watching for on the short term and the long term during the current times? The indicators uh, are, are, are not complex, uh, Omid. Uh, for, for us, uh, you, you look at your customer uh, landscape and, and you see what their needs are uh, and whether your solutions are being able to uh, deliver to their needs to make sure they're able to deliver to their end customers, right? That's what it all comes down to. It is a chain. At the end of the day, their customers are your customers because they're using your AI technologies to deliver an outcome to make sure there's customer success at their end. So, so, so really, you know, uh, from, from an indicator's perspective that we're looking out for are uh, one, uh, obviously looking at how the uh, percentage of virus spreading in terms of the number of cases on a daily basis mm -hmm. across the world, across, you know, cities, countries, uh, is increasing or decreasing? Is it an upward trend? Is it a downward trend? What yeah. countries are going into lockdown? What are not going into lockdown? Uh, what are opening? What countries are opening up where they're letting businesses uh, get back to some form of normality? Uh, so it really is a is a holistic view uh, of uh, you know looking at some trends from a customer perspective, looking at some trends from a partner perspective looking at some trends from you know the markets and the stock exchanges and then looking at trends from uh, a governmental perspective as to how they are looking at uh, getting their own cities and countries back to some form of normalcy excellent excellent and uh, do you have any realizations or understandings from this crisis that you think would be beneficial for our viewers to share like I said at the start of the interview, uh, Umid, you know, we've been um, sent a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. The world has been sent a wake-up call and whether we choose to hear it uh, and react to it or not uh, really is, is up to each and every one of us. Now, I know uh, there, are, there are conspiracy theories out there whether, you know, this is a man-made virus or this is a natural virus and, and I won't go there and comment about it. But I think you, you, you've got to look at this as, uh, as something uh, that uh, none of us expected, right? Absolutely. Uh, my, my personal takeaway is that uh, all of us need to start taking more responsibility for the world we all live in mm -hmm. and uh, consequences of our actions as one united global mankind, right? Whether that's in business through CSR, through individual socioeconomic and ecological behavior, uh, we have to start paying attention to the impact we are all having on our own future. And let's just take, for example, over the last nine months, none of us have gotten onto a plane yeah. and we've still managed to do business. There are technologies available to do that. Look at the amount of carbon footprint uh, we have saved the world from, saved uh, you know, our children from, saved yeah. mankind from. Uh, the other comment I'd like to make about realization relates to ethical AI. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and AI is being heralded as the new dawn, if you may, of, uh, uh, of the future of work. And I absolutely believe that it has the power to enable new business models, help people, um, and completely change the world. Right? Uh, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. However, uh, it's the responsible and ethical application of AI that will help ensure all our efforts deliver on these desired outcomes. Uh, not AI per se, mm -hmm. it's how we use it that matters. Right? Absolutely. And we've got, we, we got to be cautious because AI clearly presents uh, huge societal and economic benefits, but it also poses a danger if used uh, by bad actors or inappropriately, right? So from undermining democracy by skewing election results to cyber terrorism, to algor algorithmic biases, governments and companies need to make sure that uh, you know, AI does not endanger societies, 
which is why uh, you know i predict that we will see more and more of a call of arms for ai to be smartly regulated and i'm not saying regulating the application i'm not saying regulating the use mm -hmm. right you know what i mean is i'm not saying regulating the ai technologies i'm saying regulating the application and the use of it by industry right so you know really ethics regarding the use of ai across all industries in my view is already climbing the global agenda uh, it's been a mantra for us at antworks from uh, from pretty much day zero yep. when we started the company uh, my realization post covid is that uh, thankfully the rest of the world is now waking up uh, to the cause and that's a very good thing i think for all of us as a ceo we actually see this as a very exciting time to be able to grow our brand's market share, to be able to secure clients, to be able to recruit top talent, um, and to be able to launch into new regions.